Leif. Leif, O oh great Viking builder of the future, build me a shrine worthy of the name of Odin. I guess we're building something to honor the old father. Weird. <laughs> Hi good folks, my name is Leif and I want to welcome you to my channel called Devs and Dice, where I paint miniatures or craft awesome terrain for the tabletop. Today I'm going to show you how I crafted this ruined shrine thingamathing. Just before we get into it, I see that just a small percentage of my viewers are subscribed to my channel. Please do me a favor and subscribe in order to support the channel. Remember, it's free and you can always change your mind later if you want to. Alright, so I'm going to start out by sketching a little bit. Now, this is something I do usually when I sort of don't have an exact image in mind of what I want to do. But fairly quickly, I came to some sort of an octagon and I wanted it to be about 10 inches wide all in all. But first I had to figure out, well, how the heck do I draw an octagon? Thankfully, um, I sort of figured it out. Uh, I have one of these, um, I guess you would call it a compass thing that you draw with. Using the circles from very specific points, you easily get the sort of the exact middle. And all of a sudden we have uh, a perfect sort of, you know, I guess matrix or whatnot. And once I have those, I can actually find out what the middle is for each one of these quadrants. And just following those two lines then should give us a perfect octagon. And it will actually also be 10 inches as I specified. So it looks kind of like a basketball, which I have to be honest, made me wonder. Is this how basketballs are built? I must investigate this in another video. So as you can see, I am just following the lines here and where the lines overlap boom you have a nice octagon now reason why i didn't want it to be a circle or something like that which would have been fine i guess as well but i don't know i just felt like i wanted something more medieval shape and and for me very round shapes feels more modern but anyways once i had that drawn out i just went ahead and i penciled in dots one inch in because I knew I wanted stairs and when it comes to stairs and such I'm very much on a more functional level I need the you know the miniatures to be able to actually stand on the stairs so I just uh, you know increments of one inch drew smaller and smaller octagons so the inner part will be six inches and then one inch stairs two in total which should equal 10 inches all in all. Now, once I have that uh, cut out, I'm just going to sketch it on to some of that XPS foam. Give me nice lines to work with. And from here, it's uh, quite an easy thing just to cut it out using uh, the knife. Now, multiple cuts. And remember, it's, it's hard for me to explain this, but remember to actually cut and not just press the knife through. Uh, a knife works best when it actually, I don't know how to say this, like like slides on a surface and is allowed to actually cut. Don't, you know, push it through. Once I had the first large uh, octagon done, I just simply uh, removed the excess paper material and then I had the next, you know, template to work from and so on and so forth. And here you can see I'm just testing it out. And these uh, Reaper miniature bases, they're actually a little bit bigger than one inch, but they even they worked on these stairs, so that's good. Finally, we're working on the last of the octagons. Sounds like a good movie title. And again, multiple passes with the knife uh, usually gives a better result. And again, it's always a good idea to dry fit, making sure that, you know, everything looks appropriate. And as you can see, 
looks pretty good, I feel like. The, the combat, uh, you know, uh, space is quite small up top, but that's fine. Uh, I do see this as some sort of boss encounter. And that's where we can see it from the side. And as you can see here, actually, if you look at the cutting lines, I did rush it a little bit. I could have been much more neater with the cutting lines. But, you know, it is what it is. Now, following from edge to edge, I'm going to create these small, I call it, uh, like, uh, I guess, pieces of pie or pie pieces or whatever. Now, these will actually be the, the stones. So, I'm just uh, scoring the actual XPS foam and then using a pencil or something like that to you know, create a nice little bevel. Now, in order to find the middle, I just used a toothpick and made sure to, you know, poke the middle on each of these pieces in order to make, you know, everything flush and nice. And it worked pretty good. Plus, I also get a nice uh, additional sort of dry fitting uh, in there. We speak about this when, uh, in the game industry as well, that iterations are super important and the same thing here I would say. Anytime you can, you know, dry fit or test out your build, it gives you insight into, you know, what's wrong and what's, you know, right. Now time to uh, work on the actual structure or the, the texture, I should say, of the stone. I'm using these pincers just to sort of literally just, you know, pinch out uh, some pieces of the foam just to create some, you know, damage that might have happened to these blocks of stone. Here I'm using a Sharpie, which again, if you remember the last build, uh, it has alcohol in it, so it actually will melt the foam ever so slightly, which gives us, a, I feel like, a little bit better control when doing cracks. Now these pieces are, are going to be glued together and in order to prepare them for this and make sure that the glue adheres, I'm just going over it with some sanding paper. Making sure that that XPS glue just is spread out evenly and again here, here the toothpick is actually quite helpful just to make sure that I have the correct alignment. All right, so the largest of uh, the, the stone plates. Just realize now that this looks exactly like the Umbrella uh, Corporation's <laughs> logo. <laughs> Perhaps an idea for future videos. Now this one, I just needed to do the cracks at the outer sort of uh, area because it's everything else will be covered obviously by the smaller uh, octagons. But basically the same thing, do a little bit of sanding, make sure that everything is flush using the toothpick and then put a little bit of pressure on it. And I do think that I left this for a couple of hours or so with uh, a little bit of even pressure all over it, just so, you know, it actually adheres properly. And here another uh, dry fitting, making sure that everything looks uh, spiffy, which it did. So, looking at the actual pillars, uh, there was a problem. Because the XPS foam that I got in this pack is 11 millimeters thick, which I felt like is way too uh, thin for like large pillars. So there was only one option, and that was to glue these pieces together. So what I'm doing, I'm cutting out a bunch of pieces that are about one inch wide and variable height actually. And as you can see there, I used actually the hot wire foam cutter and the ruler to make a straight cut. And it actually worked quite nice and it gives a, a lot better sort of finish to the edges than uh, any blade. So here I'm just using that XPS foam and I'm gluing them two by two. And I'm putting a little bit of pressure on the actual foam, which will leave ugly indentations but already here i knew that i was going to work over the actual texture of uh, the pillars so no no biggie here i uh, after some uh, <laughs> soul searching i figured that i wanted to make these pillars a little bit more squarish but i wanted them to taper off at the top so it looks a little bit more like 
an obelisk or something like that. Now at this point I had also found my my nice texturing stone. In the last project I, I didn't know where this was, but I do actually prefer this one more than rolling up some aluminium foil. Here you can see I'm, I'm dry fitting these and just seeing uh, you know how they uh, differ from each other, but it was pretty good. So I'm just sort of cutting off toothpicks. And you can see there, uh, also, some toothpicks made it into my uh, coffee. Uh, I'm cutting these off so that they're sharp at both ends, just so I can pin them in place. This gives a little bit of stability, but also it gives me, again, a chance to dry fit the actual uh, model and just sort of move it around. Now, for this, because I was getting impatient, I used... Oh, glue uh, to, you know, uh, fasten all of the main pillars into place. Now when it came to the actual, I don't even know what to call this, the stones that were supposed to be uh, sort of resting on, on top of the pillars, I went with one single sheet of uh, foam sort of and made, to me it almost looks, uh, you know, at a certain point as fish sticks. But I used that handy um, foam cutter and just sort of tapered it off so it looked a little bit more stone-ish. Now, it's kind of tricky because I want it to look a little bit about like stone, but I want it to look like humans have actually, you know, cut this stone. So it's a balance that one has to hit sort of between the perfect and the much more sort of organic looking. Now here I'm also using hot glue in order to fasten these top pieces uh, because it just it goes faster and I needed to work a little bit faster I needed to act a little bit faster since there were some moving pieces here because I was going to put some of these pillars on top of each other as well just to create a little bit of visual interest. Now what you will get with hot glue is whisks and uh, especially I'm not too fond actually of the uh, I bought this uh, Proxon hot glue gun and I'm not too fond of it to be honest but uh, yeah because it pretty much vomits out uh, hot glue <laughs> at all times but this is what it looks like the the build and as you can see some pieces are on top of each other um, just to sort of give it a little bit more variation now I'm going to use that scenery sand from Army Painter and I'm just going to... And this is actually something I've learned from work from my dear friends at Level Art. They usually talk about hiding the scenes and whatnot. But it also actually is quite logical. If you would have like rocks and pebbles and whatnot, you would probably have it where you have cracks and where, you know, you have scenes. And as you can see, I primed this one up uh, using that XPS uh, specific uh, water-based primer from Army Painter. Here I'm just gluing some, well, about one inch pieces together because I knew I wanted to have some sort of statue or whatnot. And I actually had some bits in my bits bin that, that looked uh, the part. So here I'm taking one of the larger one by one pieces and I'm actually using the hot wire foam cutter to just sort of make a nice pattern like a it's almost like a inwards bevel and it actually worked surprisingly well. Sorry for the, the out of focus shot here but it looks quite nice and the actual statue I'm just gonna use some brush on primer and these are statues I just uh, bought a long time ago and had lying around waiting for the perfect project. Now once the glue on all of those one inch pieces had adhered properly and dried I cut it out uh, using the hot wire foam cutter and a ruler. Now I did a similar thing here, I, I I don't know, I felt inspired using this hot wire foam cutter because I, I sort of just beveled the edges a little bit, creating these nice sort of details. And the thing is, I didn't really feel like the, you know, you could still see that this was separate pieces uh, made from one 
centimeter you know foam so i figured you know what screw it let's lean into that instead so i actually just used a hot wire foam cutter to sort of create an, an very visible indentation. Then I went over that with the rock and it looks a little bit something like so once I glued everything together. And like you perhaps noticed there, uh, I also used toothpicks just to get, it, get some more structure to it. Here I'm coming in with some of that cavern base just to sort of Similar to how I did in the last video, I'm just sort of painting up all of those rubbles. Now this might have been unnecessary, you'll see later on, because I pretty much cover all of this. First I'm coming with dungeon base, doing an overbrush. Uh, looks quite nice um, already here, but of course we're going to come in with some more colors. The colors I chose were Sulfide Oxide and Crusted Sour. Now what I'm doing is, I usually call this the the ketchup and mustard method. Usually stone and rock are not just gray. So I, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to sort of create different sort of veins in the rock uh, or like spots here and there. And it looks ridiculous. It really does look ridiculous at this point. So have faith in the process. I've done this in several of my past builds, which I'm, I can link up in the corner. Um, and it does look quite nice afterwards. Now here I'm coming in with some of that dungeon highlight, which is a, a light gray. And pretty much I'm dry brushing the entire thing. And I'm being quite liberal with this one as well. And that's what it looks like. And you can already see that it's actually that, that mustard and ketchup effect is very, you know, faint. But it looks good. Here I did a mixture of the dungeon highlight and the dungeon effect, the white one, just to create an even brighter tone, and this is the end result. And here I think it looks pretty good. What I will come in with is some of my homemade wash, which is quite easy to do. It's just water, some artist inks, and some flow aid. And I'm being quite aggressive with this because I usually want to dirty it down. And yeah, like you saw there, it's going to get messy because you also want to take, uh, you know, <laughs> the underside of the actual pillars. Took me a good while to clean up uh, this afterwards, but it's all worth it. Now I'm coming back in with that last highlight, the 50-50 mixture of dungeon highlight and dungeon effects. Here you can see I'm dry fitting one of the statues. I actually did two statues in the end. Uh, I'm going back with some of that cavern base and then a little bit of cavern highlight on all of those rubble parts. Now I wanted to try this subterranean wash and I did this uh, again on the, the parts that had a little bit of gravel and rubble just to sort of give it a little bit more depth. Here I'm using Summer Undergrowth, which is um, a lichen, or like we call it in Swedish, uh, mossa. It's a, it's a moss, essentially. And I thought that this could actually, I could sell this as some sort of, you know, vines or something. Because I wanted this, yeah, whatever this is, Stonehenge ruin thing, to look quite overgrown and old. And just to reinforce that, I'm coming in with the tufts that uh, came in the Army Painter box, but also some of those nice summer flowers, uh, just to create a little bit of a hope where, where it looks, you know, quite grim. I really like adding some flowers here and there, because it does give a nice contrast to the piece. And as you can see, all of those summer, summer undergrowth, I pretty much drowned them in uh, super glue just to make them, you know, look a little bit more like some sort of vines. This was starting to look pretty good in my opinion, but I knew I wanted to include something more, something just to sort of, you know, hit that home. That, that nice look of it, you know, being quite overgrown. So I took some of the roots that I picked, uh, what is it now, uh, last year, I think, 
and I used some white glue and some of this battlefield green grass just to sort of flop them to make them look a little bit like some sort of vines and I wanted it almost to be like you know uh, players being a little bit like uh should we go in there or not is, is this you know will the vines grab a hold of us if we go in there so I wanted them to look a little bit like they're lying there waiting for a poor adventurer to come along just to strike. And at this point, I think it's time to look at the final result. good folks this one was a fun one to do and it was interesting to figure out all of the different aspects of it as well and i do think that the build really came together once you know i had all of the elements in place but what did you think about the build please feel free to tell me in the comment section down below now if you like the channel and you want to support it there's actually a number of ways you can do so Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video so that the almighty YouTube algorithm understands that it needs to share this video with other people. Or you can also join my Patreon. And on that note, I want to thank my patrons for their support. But especially I want to do a shout out to my warrior level patrons. Blake Crowell, Chris Grop, and Leander. Thank you so much guys, you're awesome. So with this, I want to wish you an awesome day. Stay safe and I will see you in the next video.